Now that you've seen how the integration between Expensify and QuickBooks Online works, I want to make sure that you're clear on one last thing for now, which is how to make sure that updates that you make in QuickBooks Online are reflected in Expensify. In other words, when you add an account, you want to make sure that that shows up in Expensify. If you think back to the lesson we did on setting policy, then you saw how you want to make sure that when you establish the accounts that are available for your employees, let's say, to use when they're adding expenses, you want to make sure that when you add a new account in QuickBooks Online, that shows up in Expensify and is able to be included on that list that the employees have access to. Let's go ahead and see what this looks like. So let's say you've added something in QuickBooks Online and you want to make sure that that's updated in Expensify, such as a new expense account in the chart of accounts. Let's take a look. I've got, as you've seen, a sort of bare bones file in QuickBooks Online right now. And under the expenses section, I've got bank charges, dues, and subscriptions. We've got meals and entertainment, which is going to be a big one probably for Expensify as far as expense tracking. Uh, Potions and delivery and purchases. We don't have a mileage account. Uh, what we we'll want to do is come up here and choose new. And the account type, of course, is going to be expense. And with QuickBooks Online, we have the detail account type. So we have to give it another uh, le level of, uh, of typing, so to speak. Um, so we're looking for something like mileage. So let's look down. Travel. So we'll call it travel, and then the name will be mileage. Right? So we'll call it mileage reimbursements just to be really specific. I like specificity. And we'll click Save. So that's saved, but if I go here to uh, add a new expense, and I want to do distance, and I want to put it to the category of mileage, it's not going to be here yet, right? See, it's not there. So what we can do to sort of ensure that it gets there is go over into our policy, and under connections, find the sync now option and click it. And everything's changing. Everybody should be happy in a moment. And now let's try it. And it's still not there because there's one other thing you have to do. And I'll show you what I mean. Let's go to admin policies, categories. So it's going to find it here, mileage reimbursement, but we have to check off to enable it. We have to let Expensify know. So Expensify doesn't assume just because I've added an account that I want to use it in Expensify. In fact, while we're here, there's some things we probably want to uncheck, such as uh, purchases, right? Inventory asset. We're not, giving, we're not letting somebody buy inventory through Expensify. That's a major purchase. Uh, probably don't need cost of goods sold in here. Postage and delivery is fine. Mileage reimbursed is fine. Don't want them using undeposited funds. Uh, and we probably don't want them using bank charges, unless we're going to reimburse people for bank charges, which doesn't seem likely. And you may have noticed the pop-ups appearing here at the top right. When you make a change, it lets you know that the change has been saved. So there's nothing to do as far as hitting like a save button. It's done. Now let's go add a new expense. Let's refresh the page. New expense, distance, category, mileage reimbursement. And notice now some of the other things are gone. So it's always a good idea to first sync up after you've made the change in QBO. Make sure you go and check what's been enabled, right? Make sure you check that the accounts that you might have added have been enabled. And then before adding a new expense, refresh your page. This way you can be absolutely certain that everything's going to appear there. That should. Everything else is pretty much going to work the same. You're going to be working primarily in Expensify. You're going to track your expenses. You're going to add them to a report. And, and then the admin or whoever is approving those reports is going to export them at the appropriate time to Expensify in accordance with what we set up in our setting. And that's my story and I'm sticking to it. As always, if you have any questions, please post them in the answers form, which is available to subscribed students only. The course may very well be free as of the time you're watching this, so if you'd like to take advantage of that, just sign up for a subscription at schoolofbookkeeping.com, and you can access the forum, ask questions, and I generally get back to you within 24 hours with a response. As always, I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you on the web. One of the things that gets me excited when I look at a new application in terms of things I can use for my business is when I see something that truly is going to make my life easier. 
I'll be honest, when I started this course, I knew enough to know that I loved the product Expensify, but I had no idea what was in store for me in terms of what I ultimately found out as I dug deeper and deeper into the product. It seemed like the more I dug into the product, the more impressed I was with how well Expensify handles the entire process of managing and tracking expenses, submitting them, adding reports, getting those re reports approved, and even paying people by way of reimbursing them for their expenses through a product like Expensify. The Evernote integration, the way you can set up policies and workflow in terms of who reports to who and who submits to who. I was consistently more and more impressed with this product as I went through the course. And I couldn't be happier to be able to bring you a course on a product like this right here at schoolofbookkeeping.com. I'm very excited about this. I hope you are too. As always, I hope you learned something and I hope you had a little fun along the way too. And I look forward to seeing you in the next course. Thank <laughs> you.